Yeah, I'm on my way over to bid a removal. It's a, it's a giant fir tree. I've seen it before. But what I want to do is I want to really scrutinize and kind of do the job in my head. Whenever I bid a tree job, especially on a big removal, you have to really think about all the potential things that are going to happen. You know, what kind of a work environment do you have? What's the site like? Is it on a hill? Are you going to have to haul everything up the hill? Do you have to haul all the wood away? Can you leave it on site? Can you leave it in big logs or does it all have to be cut up? Uh, do they want you to chip everything and haul the chips away? Can you chip on site and shoot the chips off the mountain? Uh, in this case, because I'm working up in a mountain job, uh, I almost always get to shoot the chips off in a direction. You know, they're beneficial. They're, uh, they're something that's kind of desirable. People like the look of the chips on the ground. But you have to really think long and hard about, you know, what it is you're getting yourself into. And unfortunately, I know a lot of you guys, and myself included, have made the mistake of going up to a job and saying, oh, that's not so bad, I can get that done in a day. Ah, oh, nice open drop zone, piece of cake, da 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 da, and before you know it, you underbid the job. So, I always recommend that when you do a bid, especially, like I said, especially on a removal, um, go to it first with an open mind. Don't don't make a, a quick judgment. Don't make a, a quick opinion on what you think it's going to cost to do the job or what you want to charge. Uh, second, very important, walk all the way around the tree. Don't just look at it from one vantage point because from all the different perspectives, you're going to get a different idea of not only the lean of the tree, but things that you may not see. And some of the things that you don't see are, you know, how dead is the tree or how bad is it? Um, there are certain trees that once they reach a, a point of being too far gone, the bark starts peeling off and you're not going to be able to spur up that tree safely. Um, there's a lot of times I'll get into a tree and I, I'll just, I'll just say, you know, I'm, I'm going to respectfully decline this one. It's been dead too long. So you have to ask all those questions. How long has it been standing dead? Another really critical thing is to pay attention to um, what type of a tree it is. And, and how much do you know about the species? I know that fir trees, Douglas fir, once they start to dry out, they rot pretty fast. And if you leave a fir tree dead, standing for more than a year, um, you're really risking your life by going up there to, to cut it down. You know, occasionally you get a job where you can make a big felling. And, and those are always fun. You know, you can make a big wedge and drop it in the woods or do something wild and crazy. And, you know, that, it doesn't matter how dead it is for that. Well, it kind of does because some of the holding power of the wood is different. Or you may have some decay pockets or you may have um, a reason why the, the tree would not go the way you want it to go. So, all these things taken into consideration, um, I'm going to ask you guys, what would you bid this job for? I'm going to show you the tree. It's, a, it's, it's about 130 feet tall. It's not a giant fir. It has a trunk diameter of about uh, 40 inches at the base but it's consistent for quite a ways. It, it's still a fairly large tree. I know different parts of the country you have different economies and different rates. Um, I'm not even going to tell you what I'm going to charge for this one. What I want you to do is just look at it yourself and go ahead and put a number down in the comments section. And don't read the other comments when you put your number down. And tell me what you think. So, bidding tree work. It's not as easy as some people think. Alright, let's talk about this particular tree that I'm going to give a bid for removing. It's a Douglas fir. It is completely dead. I want you to understand that I'm shooting this with a GoPro camera, so it's a wide-angle lens, so uh, things are a lot larger than they appear. This is about a 40-inch diameter trunk. 
The tree is, I'm guessing, between 120 and 130 feet tall. Note that most of the fir needles are gone from the tree. When a, a tree dies, it, it holds on to its leaves or its needles for a period of time. When it reaches a point where everything is dropped off, you have a better indicator of how long it's been dead. So I am going to ask the clients, you can see some dead needles down low, but as you look up, uh, the upper canopy uh, doesn't have any of the dead needles left. Also take note of the, the lean of the trunk. It's leaning towards the downhill side. It's pretty soft soil out here, and I can imagine if I let all the branches fly, it should be okay. I think all the branches will hang up just fine into this area without rolling down the hill. But the wood is another story. Um, it looks like I could put a felling cut and pull it up onto this embankment, but um, on second observation you'll see that it would take some creative work with possibly a bottle jack or, or something along those lines to get it to come up, which increases the time in getting it down. The other option would be to build some kind of a catch with the branches because the last thing you want would be for some of these pieces of wood to go flying down the hill. And there's other things to think about like will the bees become active while we're working? So much to think about. So go ahead and put down your bid. While I was there I took a little drive up to another neighboring park. This was just about a mile down the road. And I've got an interesting story about this particular park. 28 years ago, my wife and I did a memorial grove of trees here. A nursery donated 30 redwood trees in five gallon cans. Uh, here's, a, here's a tree that I planted. This was in a one gallon can and it's doing quite well. This is a redwood, coast redwood. Unfortunately, the top blew out of that one. But this is the, uh, the parkland as it looks. There's lots of native trees in this park. Uh, there's a couple of madrones back in there, a lot of Douglas fir, a lot of oaks, different types of oaks, tan oaks, and, and the uh, canyon live oaks are up here, some really, really big canyon live oaks. This is the first of the redwood trees. This was planted 28 years ago, and it got smashed, and it came back from the roots. Here's one that is doing pretty well. You can see the trunk is about, oh, five or six inches in diameter. Bear in mind that none of these trees, that's a fir. I wanted to show you the difference in the needles there. None of these trees uh, received any additional irrigation. The native fir trees have, have taken off. I'm um, looking around, trying to, oh, there's another redwood. That one's doing a little better. These trees, if they were planted down in an urban environment, would grow really, really fast. And a 28-year-old redwood tree that's irrigated in a yard might have a trunk diameter of about, oh, 24 inches or so. Well, look at that old picnic table. So I'm going to continue walking. I counted, originally we planted 30 trees. And I've counted four of them so far, and only two of those were of any stature whatsoever. The other two had been destroyed either by animals or trees falling on them or something. And as you can see, lots of things happen in the forest. Trees fall down, trees die, animals come through, deer chop on things. Lots of stuff happens. So this is the primary area where we planted the, the redwoods. And let's take a quick walk. There is, that's number five of all the trees. I'm going to count them all up as, as we go. This whole area changed so dramatically. 28 years ago, there were none of these little tan oaks or little firs. The area looks entirely different. I, I wish I had a video of what it looked like when we planted these trees. There's yet another one. See, they're, they're all fairly small. So there was four in the first area, and I'm up to three over here. And some of the redwood trees have barely survived. There, some of them, you can tell, have, have been stomped to the ground and are surviving just from the roots coming back. This is a circle of redwoods that I planted. 
Um, originally, there was a fir tree right here that was, oh, about two inches in diameter. And you can see the, there's about 30 rings on there. And that was the first of the trees. And I planted this grove of redwoods in a circle. And for the longest time, it was really nice to go into this circle. Um, these are the best of the trees that, that I planted down in this area. And all of those trees. And ironically, those are the only trees that I mulched. There was a big rotten stump right there. And I took um, about two inches of mulch from the, the stump. And I put it around all five of those trees. And all five of those trees did better than any of the others that were left out in the woods. Oh, there it looks like, is that a fir? No, oh, it's a fir. I keep looking for them. All in all, um, it was interesting to look around. I counted up a total of 14 out of the 30 trees that have survived. And as you can see, this one is multiple trunks because it got smashed. Now, I hope you enjoyed this little walk in the woods. I'm doing a lot of that lately during this coronavirus shutdown period. So I want you guys to stay safe out there and uh, go ahead and put a, a number down on that fir tree. Let me know what you think about it. Let me know what, uh, how much you would charge for it. Be safe.